What the fuck do you mean I'm not gonna be in the TBU videos this season? What the fuck do you mean it's cause the people don't like me? Everyone fucking loves me! What the fuck? You're spouting shit now, mate! Right, I swear to god, mate, if I ever see you in real fucking life, I will take your eyeballs and I will stuff them so far down your throat that you'll be shitting your own fucking eyeballs. Is that what you want? Do you want to see your own digestive tract as they digest the very essence of your vision? No? Then let me be in the videos! God's sake, man. Get that camera out of my face right now or I swear to fucking God. How is it going, TBU fans? And welcome back to the Battle Union Week 3, where Birmingham Spritzy are going to be playing against the Miami Dolphinis, coached by Baby Eye or my good friend Sinister Sable Eye, whichever one you prefer to speak of him as, <laughs> if you get what I mean. Uh, now, Baby Eye is genuinely a really, really nice guy. I get on with him really well, so before we even start, make sure you go and check him out in the description. His links will be down there, just like every TBU coach is, in case you want to go and listen and watch their sides of things. So, yeah, uh, it'd be really cool if you did that. But yeah, with all that sentimental stuff out of the way, let me just bring up his team real quick before I even jump into mine. He has a Jirachi, a Salamence, a Rotom Wash, a Superior, a Mamoswine, Hitmontop, a Romatisse, Lipard, Salazzle, and Purugly. Threats, threats, threats. Really, really, really difficult for me this week, this is going to be, because this team threatens me in more ways than I can even comprehend. But what we're going to be bringing this week is going to be, and let me just click on it for dramatic, uh, dramatic effect. Hey, this lot. We're bringing Mega Beedrill, Tapu Koko, Ditto with a Choice Scarf, because that's the only Ditto, uh, Slowbro with a Salt Vest, uh, Chestnut, I can't even remember for the life of me what Chestnut it was, and a Fortress that is fairly interesting. But yeah, I'm going to go through them very, very quickly. I don't want to have these Team Builder videos too long, but I'm just going to go over some of the very, very basic points. Now, the big threat for me on his team is Salamence and Jirachi. Because, and also Salazzle to a, a slightly lesser extent. But those are the two main problems for me. Jirachi and Salamence. Oh, and Rotom Wash, of course. Because they are ridiculously hard for me to find switch-ins to on my team. My team at the moment seems to be built more towards offense rather than defense. Because I'm not the type of person that's going to be able to switch into things willy-nilly. I have to keep offensive momentum and force the opponent to be on the back foot. Uh, and if I don't build my teams accordingly, then I'm not playing to my, my draft's fullest extent. That may change after week four, probably considering to make a, a couple of changes to even that out. But I like the way this draft is. It has enough to take on certain threats, but there are going to be holes in, in opponents' uh, drafts for them to exploit, if you get what I mean. There's going to be holes in my draft for them to really start prodding sticks into. But yeah. The Beedrill we've gone with this week is U-Turn, Poison Jab, Drill Run, Sword Stance, Adamant Max Attack with 164 speed, just enough to outspeed a Salazzle um, Timid Max, and yeah, coverage moves to, to do damage for days, and Sword Stance, uh, in case I want Sword Stance up on a hit on top, or a Aromatisse, or Superior, because I can live a Hidden Power Fire from one that's not a plus two, maybe even Jirachi, depending on what kind of Jirachi set it is. I can Sword Stance up on quite a few things, and a Sword Stance Poison Jab slash U-Turn is going to be doing hella damage. Drill Run is literally just there for Salazzle, because it's the only thing I get that can one-hit KO it. Uh, I'm pretty sure a plus two Poison Jab is still going to do a heck of damage, but I want to be able to Oko it. Now, straight on to Tapu Koko. I want these to be shorter because they, they genuinely take up too much time. What we've done is we've gone with the Wise Glasses, 156 Timid, 252 Special Attack, 100 Attack. Now, the reason for that is because I only need 156 speed to outspeed Salazzle. And I was tempted to run Max Timid because I wasn't sure if that would be able to outrun... Um, Mamoswine at, with a Choice Scarf, but Mam Mamoswine with a Choice Scarf just about outspeeds us at plus one. Uh, I think, like, Tyrantrum also does the same, so uh, I don't know why I went too much into detail on that. But I've got coverage moves for days with 100 attack investment just to beef up the damage of Brave Bird. Volt Switch, Grass Knot, Brave Bird, Dazzling Gleam. All I needed to hit his team for at least neutral coverage. The only things that really want to be switching into this guy are a potential Spadef, Jirachi, 
uh, Hitmontop can't, Aromatisse can, but those are literally the only ones. You've got Rotom Wash uh, that doesn't really want to take a Volt Switch, so that's not really much of a switch, and even if it does, uh, it can switch in on like a, a Volt Switch, and then I can just get momentum, go out into Beedrill, and then U-Turn, get more momentum. Like, if I keep this to its offensive full, uh, like, to its fullest offensive potential, then this draft is pretty much just Snowball City. Now, like I've said, I've already gone with Ditto, but the thing I was thinking of with Ditto here is, um, basically, I'm, I'm worried about Supersonic Sky Strike Salamence. That thing sets up on me, I, I lose. Like, I, it outspeeds me, I lose. Good game, I, I appreciate your, your time and effort. But I needed Ditto just to ensure that I, I wasn't going to get swept by that, because there are quite a few Pokemon in this team that he could set up on, such as Mega Beedrill, if he gets a free switch on that, he can just click the Dragon Dance button, and then I'm in trouble. Uh, Chestnut can't really do too much to me, so uh, that that's also a problem. And Ditto is very important for that sort of thing. Now, Ditto, I've also gone with Hidden Power Ground EVs. It's not on here because Showdown reset it, but the EVs, I promise you, will be Hidden Power Ground. And the only one of those that even means anything is that uh, it means, like, the HP IV is still 31 and none of the others really matter, so Ditto is pretty much just, yeah. It's a Ditto that if it steals in power, it's going to have Hidden Power Ground. Basically just to hit Salazzle, in case Salazzle wants to be running Hidden Power something or other. Maybe Hidden Power... Dark? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was just wishful thinking, I guess. Uh, now, the next one I've gone with is Slowbro with Assault Vest Regenerator. Uh, I figured that this, this guy would be my only switch into a Salazzle, because, like I said, my team struggles with some of his offense, but I'm lucky that I do have a Slowbro that's willing to just sit here and be uh, Assault Vested. <laughs> Like, it takes about 47% from a, a Sludge Wave from a Choice Specs Modest Salazzle with this set, so I can switch in, take one, then just get out, get my health back, or threaten it out with like a Psy Shock or something. Like, Slowbro is doing work here. But with the max defense EVs, it also works as a check to a Banded Mamoswine, meaning that Banded Mamoswine's Earthquake cannot two hit KO me. I can lift two Earthquakes from Mamoswine and then just, you know, threaten it back with a Scold or something. And if then I have to switch out, I get my health back. And I can also work out that it will be banded and go out into Chestnut. Like, I can use the damage off of that to gauge what set it is. Although I will say I am expecting Scarf Mamoswine, which has been reflected in the uh, Fortress set. Also, fuck off, phone. <laughs> now, Chestnut, I thought that Spikes would be good against this team. Because he only has Rotom Wash and Salamence that will avoid them. Everything else is going to be taking about, I think it's 12.5% or 15% from Spikes. I can't remember the exact number. But if I can Spike stack against this team, I can uh, I can pretty much just force them to take damage when it, whenever they come in. And with uh, offensive mons like Serperia, Salazzle, Jirachi, they're not really going to appreciate that. Uh, especially Jirachi, because, you know, that thing... It kind of wants to be as bulky as it can be, and Spikes kind of hamper that. Uh, I made a bit of a mistake, though. I kind of overlooked the fact that Chestnut is going to be inviting in a Hitmontop pretty much any day of the week, so I really didn't pack a way to, to deal with that. In hindsight, I'd like to get rid of the Seed Bomb in place of, like, Toxic, or if I look at its moveset, I believe the only other thing it has to hit it with would be an Aerial Ace, but... <laughs> It would have been nice to be able to pack a, a Toxic on this thing just to punish the Hitmon Top switch in and get some residual on that. But, 50, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. <laughs> That's all I've got to say to that. And the final mod on the team is Ockerberry Fortress. Now, Ockerberry is here because there are a couple of mods on his team that are going to be wanting to run Hidden Power Fire, such as the Superior, such as the um, Jirachi, which could run Fire Punch such as Lipard, which could run Hidden Power Fire, Aromatisse might want to run it, uh, Purugly might even want to run it if he decides to bring that, Mamoswine might even be tempted to run it, like, there are quite a few mons on his team that might want to, even uh, Salamence can be running things like Fire Blast, so Ockerberry was important here. Now, like I said, I, I expect Mamoswine to be Choice Scarf, and if it is, then Gyro Ball, like, one-shots it any day of the week with this much investment. I can one-shot a Mamoswine that has 152 health from, like, max with a uh, gyro ball from this investment. So it means that I can still be as bulky on the special side as I can and take rogue hidden power fires from things. 
but I can also be offensive and smack things in the face. I've also got Stealth Rock on there because, you know, Stealth Rocks is always nice when you're up against the Salazzle Salamence core and Rapid Spin because I don't want to be Stealth Rocked. Beedrill does not like that. But yeah, that's the team, guys. Uh, not, not really much else to say. It's a bit of a quicker one this week, but I think I touched on all the, the, the base points I needed. But yeah, let's get into the game and see what happens when Birmingham Spritzy took on the amazing Miami Dolphins. And here we are in the battle, and I bet you didn't expect to be seeing my ugly mug in here. But yeah, I got this pretty damn sweet logo, uh, layout thingy off of Rykwin. Uh, links down in the description, casual plug. Uh, and it's honestly really cool, so I thought I might as well use it. It looks really good, he's really quick, he's really damn good, and yeah, just make sure you go and, you know, if you need anything, go and let him know because it's really good quality and he's very, very nice to work with. <laughs> but yeah, the team that he's brought is the Perugly, Salazzle, Rotom Wash, Hitmontop, Mamoswine and Jirachi. No Salamence. I literally pumped my fist in the air and went yes when I saw no Salamence because I was so damn happy to know that that thing wasn't coming. However, Perugly, not so much. Not so much uh, very happy that that thing's there at all. Uh, I was very, very worried about what that thing might be doing because, if you didn't know, viewer picks in the TBU this season, in The Battle Union, can have support Z-moves. They are the only Pokemon in the entire uh, like league that are allowed to use support Z-moves. Any other Pokemon that are allowed Z-moves are only allowed offensive ones, like my Hydreigon or my Talonflame, are the only ones that are allowed to use offensive Z-moves, whereas my Manganium is the only one that can use a support Z-move. Uh, but that's a bit of a, um, like, that's basically a bit of a worry in team prep because it means that this Perugly over here could be doing whatever the hell and I have no idea how to deal with it. But I don't feel too threatened by it. The only way that I would feel too, uh, like, offensively threatened by that thing is if it was, like, Choice Band with, like, Hidden Power Fire or something because no matter what it is, I wall it with Fortress and Slowbro otherwise. So I'm not too worried about it. I do know it gets U-turn, I do know it gets Hypnosis, I do know it has a very strange move pool, but that's literally the only thing I'm not too sure about. Uh, Hitmontop is going to be doing spinny things. Mamoswine is either Banded Scarf or Life Orb, so it's going to be offensive. Rotom Wash is pretty much just going to be doing Rotom things. It's either going to be Bulky or Scarf, and I'm not too bothered either way, because Chestnut kind of acts as a switch into it anyway. Uh, Salazzle, pfft, Slowbro deals with it. It's going to be offensive. It might be Flame Charge, it might be Substitute, it might be whatever could be Specs, which I'm kind of expecting because it just dicks me, but I've still got Slowbro as a way of dealing with it. And Jirachi, you're a bit of a problem, but I feel like I can just keep offensive momentum against that thing, and I can use Ditto to scout any sets I'm unsure of. So I can scout the Perugly with Ditto, I can scout the Jirachi with Ditto. Ditto seems like it could be very useful for just gaining information, and information in Pokemon is the most vital thing in the game. Like, if you know what your opponent's bringing, you know what to expect from them. So... Yeah, I like being able to build against this because I kind of knew what was like what the the team was gonna look like when it was there. But yeah, I feel like at this point I have to kind of lead with Chestnut because if I lead with Chestnut, then I get a good matchup against pretty much anything. And the, the two things that don't really match up too well against it are uh, Jirachi. Uh, the two things that Chestnut doesn't match up well against are Jirachi Salazzle. It doesn't really mind the others. Oh, and Mamoswine, but it would have been a good opportunity to get some rocks up. And if Perugly's there, you know, first turn spikes, that's always nice. So yeah, let's just get into the game and see what happens when uh, Miami Dolphinis had to... How am I even trying to say this? <laughs> when they had to deal with the challenge that we posed to them. That was an interesting way of saying, let's get into the game! <laughs> What's wrong with me? Oh, now bear in mind I haven't seen this replay since we played it, and that was about a day ago, so I might be a, few, a bit rusty on things, but yeah, he is going to lead with the Perugly, which is indeed shiny, big birth of the shiny, and I'm going to lead with Reina. Reina, ima koko de! Yarunda na, ima koko de! Ah, shoubu wa ima koko de kimero! Are we doing this right now? <laughs> that was a bit of a spoiler. But yeah, he's going to go for U-turn. Uh, it doesn't really show me anything. It's a bit of a, you know, a kind of a staple per rugby move. But he's going to go right out into the Hitmontop as I'm going to go for my cheeky layer of spikes. Which was 
kind of a good move on his part because I don't have a ghost type to, you know, threaten the spin. I can't really do too much against it. I know the spin's coming at this point, and I have no way of punishing the hip on top. That's what I said in my team preview, uh, in my uh, my team builder. I have no way of punishing this hip on top for coming in and spinning on me. I really should have packed Toxic because, you know, I'm not too worried about it because it does mean that I can, you know, I can learn from it in the future. And if it comes back to bite me in the ass in this game, then so be it. But yeah, uh, as I just, as you just saw, he goes for a Toxic as I switch into my Slowbro, trying to, you know, just put pressure on the spin. And he's now going to make an offensive switch out into the Jirachi, because, you know, he's probably expecting me to go for a Toxic. I'm just going to go for a safe skull. Uh, and I do still have my, um, my uh, spikes up, but that damage, that's a little bit too little damage. Like, that kind of shows me that that's probably some kind of bulky Rachi, if not assault vested. So, I was a little bit on my toes here, so I decided, you know what, let's just be certain. Let's go into Ditto and work out its moveset. And as I switch into Ditto here, I learn that this thing's moveset is Wish, Iron Head, Toxic, Protect. And then it throws up a Wish in front of me, and I'm like, oh god, he's doing this. And I started to be like, oh no. So at this point, I was a bit rattled, and I decided to go out into Fortress, because I'm like, okay, so it can't actually touch my Fortress, but it's going to make an offensive switch and just pass this Wish out into the Hitmon top, because that's going to take Spike's damage. Um, it had a good matchup against his own Jirachi. It kind of made me think that this thing might have Earthquake, because, you know, why would you bring out a Hitmon top against the Jirachi if you didn't have a way of hitting it super effectively? But now my, my uh, Fortress is in here, and I'm like... Well, he's got to spin, so I've got to go out and pressure it. And if he goes for Toxic, I'm fine. So Slowbro can just come in here, you know, take a like a 5-6 damage from a Rapid Spin, and then just do things and stuff. It threatens this Hitmontop out any day, all day. I really should do this, by the way. This is really bad, but I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to go into Playback, and we're going to go for... Where is it? Speed. We're going to raise that to a bit faster, because this is a bit of a long one. But yeah, uh, <laughs> that was bad. But he's going to predict me after rapid spinning, and he's going to predict my Scald and go out into his Rotom. That's bad for me. I need to get this Rotom down really low because I have no switch-ins at all, apart from my Chestnut. Chestnut is the only thing I have that can even pose as some kind of semblance of a switch-in. If I don't switch into Chestnut, something is going to take a lot of damage, uh, and I don't want to have to switch my Coco in and then see him go into something else, or I don't want to switch Coco in on a hydro, uh, hydro Pump or something. So... Yeah, he's going to Volt Switch on out into his Salazzle, just, I guess, to do a bit of damage to, uh, like, whatever it was. Like, just to, you know, force out Chestnut so that I have to go into my answer. And he's going to go for a Fire Blast on the Switch as I go into Slowbro, and he's going to crit. And I'm like, ugh, oh, that's Life Orb. Ugh, oh, that's a crit. Ugh, oh, Slowbro is getting worn down. I need this guy healthy. I can't keep staying in with him. I am going to go for, I believe, a Psy Shock on this turn, or it might have been another Scold. I'm not too sure. No, I'm not, because I'm going to switch out. Like I said, I'm a bit, I'm a bit hazy on some of, the, some of the details of this game. But I'm going to go out into my Ditto. I guess it was to try and gain a bit of uh, information on the Salazzle's moveset as well, just to know if it was running a Hidden Power or something. And once again, I'm going to go out into this, uh, this Jirachi, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do what I did against the Alamomola. If this thing's going to come in here and it's going to try and be defensive, I'm going to steal its wishes and I'm going to do exactly what he's doing to, to me. Apart from I'm going to do it better because I have all of your Pokemon with a Ditto. <laughs> but yeah, he's going to go for Iron Head and I thought, you know what, that's quite a safe one. I can go into uh, into Beedrill and it's going to do hella damage. And I'm like, oh, Beedrill doesn't want to take that much so early. It doesn't want to be having to, you know, take that much health, but the wish is nice and I get right back up to near full. Gives me a free Mega Evolution. And this is where I'm like, I really wish I'd clicked Sword Stance. I go for a U-turn here, and he's going to go for a, uh, for, a, uh, for a Protect just to see what I have to, I want to do. If I'd have gone for a Sword Stance there, something takes hella damage. Whereas, I went for U-turn, and... Uh, now I just get like half its health off. I really, really should have just gone for Sword Stance there, because I wasn't sure if I could live another Iron Head, and I was a bit worried about him getting a crit and losing Beedrill, so I went for a bit of a safe play. But I am just going to go out to Slowbro, because I do have the Fire Blast. I can try and snag a burn with Scald if I feel like it. But I'm going to predict his switch in, and I'm going to go for a Psy Shock as he goes into John Wall. And that's the Rosen Wash. No, I'm not. I keep saying that, and I can't remember what I actually do. Because, as you can see, I'm switching around a lot. 
and I'm trying to get initiative on what he's doing. Like, I'm trying to get initiative and stop this Rotom Wash coming in, because every time it comes in, I'm really screwed, because it just gets to fire off safe moves, and he's going to go for a Thunderbolt there. Uh, he's already revealed my leftovers, and Reiner, the chestnut, slowly getting worn down. It feels like once Reiner goes down, like now, then I'm screwed. He reveals the hidden power flying, takes out my chestnut, and now I don't have an answer to Roton Wash. Every time it comes in, I'm having to make a pivot. And now I'm on a little bit of tilt. I don't particularly know how I'm supposed to deal with this. I'm going to go for a Volt Switch. He's going to stay in. And I'm thinking, what are you going to do? Are you going to go for a Will-O-Wisp, or are you going to stay in and go for a Volt Switch? I decided the safest play I could do at this point was to go into Ditto, work out this thing's set, because every time Ditto comes in, like I said, I gain information about your, your team. And he's going to go for his own Volt Switch. That damage shows me it's a little bit defensive. That did a little bit too, too little uh, with uh, Electric Terrain. But, yeah... You know, that's things. I did work out that it was Hidden Power, Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch from there. It did indeed have the Hydro Pump. I was kind of expecting Will-O-Wisp, but because of that, I knew that I was safe uh, in, you know, bringing in my offensive physical threats like Beedrill. I'm going to go into Coco. I'm going to fire for Volt Switch because I really, really don't want him passing a wish, uh, like, safely into my uh, into his Rotom Wash. Because if he, if he passes a wish into that Rotom Wash then I'm struggling. It's at low health. I can keep it pressured if I can just get an offensive moment on it. I'm getting chipped down here. I'm really struggling to find any kind of foothold against this Jirachi, and I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. So I fire off a Scald, hoping I can get a burn. No burn. Two Scalds, no burns. You know what? I'm not even counting that because it's hacks to get a burn, but it, it seems like it happens every every 10 seconds now. He's, he's going to go for an Iron Head, and I'm going to flinch, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting Toxic stored by a damn Jirachi. I believe that turn I went for a Fire Blast just to be like, you know what? Screw it. Uh, and, yeah, unfortunately, Electric Terrain's going to go, so I need to get that back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out an Offensive Switch here. I'm going to go out into my Fortress because I know I have Earthquake on this thing. And he's going to go for an Iron Head. I was so happy not to see Wish there. If he'd have wished there, he could have passed it into Rotom any day, all like all day, any day. And yeah, like he would have just been able to get that Rotom back and it just would have been nasty for me. But this is an important moment in the game. He goes out into his Mama Swine on my Fortress as I set up Stealth Rocks. Now that is huge because now I have a chance to go for a gyro ball and see what this mammoth swine wants to do. If it's hidden power fire, I live the hit. If it's banded earthquake, I live the hit. There's no way it can kill me apart from a banded earthquake crit, and I think even that is a, is like a very low chance to kill me. So I have to stay in. I have to go for a gyro ball, and I have to hope that I can, you know, see what he's doing ahead of time and see if that if. <sighs> Let's try that again. I think he's scarfed. I said that from the team preview. If he's scarfed, he's got no reason to bring this in here. I'm not too sure why he did. I guess maybe he was expecting spikes. If so, he might be bringing this in to try and knock off me. However, that would be a good play if I wasn't expecting scarf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a gyro ball right here. And he's going to outspeed me and go for a knockoff. That damage tells me he's not banded. And my gyro ball is just going to go BOOM! That's a dead Mammoth Swine, and that is huge. Because if that thing wasn't around, uh, if that thing was around, I couldn't spam Volt Switch as much. Because, quite frankly, going for Volt Switch against a team that has ground types is not fun. I, it kind of pressures you a little bit. I, I don't like doing it. But, with that thing out of the way, I can get all of the offensive threat, like momentum I want. And as he brings in the hit on top to try and spin away my rocks, I think... Why not? I can go into Tapu Koko now and click the Brave Bird button. And he's going to go for Rapid Spin. And I'm like, you know what? I don't actually need to click the Brave Bird button. I can just click Volt Switch because he doesn't want to stay in here. He doesn't know my Coco's uh, item or moveset or anything yet. So I'm going to click Volt Switch. And this is going to do... Uh, not enough. Showing me that this thing is definitely some kind of offense, like defensive like max HP variant. But it is going to mean I'm going to be able to go out into Slowbro. He's kind of like, he's just like, I don't really care about anything this Hitmontop wants to do. 
I can just come in here and I can just fire off a Fire Blast or a Scold or a Psy Shock or an Ice Beam. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to click Fire Blast here, predicting the Jirachi to come in. And what's going to happen is it's going to go into Jirachi, I'm going to hit the Fire Blast, and it's going to do nothing. It's fat. It's a fat Rachi. Literally the fat Rachi. I hate it. I really hate it. So I'm going to go for a... I think it was a, a Scold here. Yeah, I go for a Scold. Trying to score a burn. Any residual on this thing is nice. We get a crit. We get a burn. <sighs> a little bit of hacks comes in our favor. Well, two lots of hacks in one go. But I needed the residual on that thing. It's so nice to have residual damage on a Pokemon that, that is relying on Wish Protect for its health. Because it's only going to be getting about 38% of its health back. Uh, because it's, it's going to be taking 6% health every turn from the burn, and it really severely hampers it. So I go out into uh, Jirachi, the Ditto, trying to steal its wishes, and at this point I'm thinking, well I'm Scarfed. I can just Scarf Iron Head this thing to death, and you've got to make a, some kind of offensive play about it. So I think what I do is I just go for a double switch, and I go out into Lukaku, Romelu Lukaku, Romelu Lutapu, Romelu Lu whatever, <laughs> whichever you'd like. Uh, just to put offensive pressure on because he has to keep going for wishes. He has to try and get that uh, Rotom back to full health. And I need to be able to offensively pressure that. And with no Mama Swine around, he can't punish my Volt Switches. So I'm going to go for a Volt Switch. He's going to stay in. He's going to do nothing. And he's just going to get back to full health. And I'm like, well, what do I do here? Do I, do I go into this thing? He goes for Toxic and Beedrill comes in and I'm like, well, if he goes for Iron Head, I can just U-turn next turn anyway. I can just wear this thing down quite chip like offensively and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a ballsy man here I clicked the sword stance because I'm like well I lived an iron head before and I think that I can live another one and he clicks wish and I'm like okay now we're in business now we're in business because now I get to fire off a plus two u-turn but in hindsight and I'm gonna pause that here in hindsight going for u-turn here is a bit of a misplay because I forgot that Hitmontop gets intimidate what well, I say forgot, I didn't necessarily forget. I just kind of thought that, well, since, you know, I'm a plus two Beedrill, I'm going to be able to cause massive damage to something and I can keep the offensive pressure. Whereas if I'd have gone for Drill Run there, like, it probably would have killed the Jirachi from where, it, from where it's at. And I could have then poison jabbed this thing next turn and he wouldn't really have had much to deal with me. But nevertheless, I go out into Tapu Koko. And I go for the Brave Bird as he gets his Wish thing back up, so he's right back up at full health. And that doesn't do that much. It really doesn't do that much. I really wasn't expecting that. Like, I was expecting it to at least take it down to red, if not kill. But, nonetheless, it lives. And he goes for a Stone Edge. Doesn't do too much. And now I'm just like, well, shit. <laughs> I have to go for a, a Volt Switch. Because I didn't want him switching out into, like, Jirachi on another one. And he stays in, and he's going to go for another Stone Edge, so I'm just like, why not? Slowbro just comes in and takes, like, whatever. And I can just kill this thing off with anything I want anyway, it's at low enough health. But yeah, now I can just, I think I go for a Fire Blast next turn. Because I'm slowly clawing my way back into this game, I'm chipping him down. And he's going to go for a Stone Edge, just sacrificing this hit on top. I'm not, not too sure why he would, you know not want to keep this thing around, it's at low health, he can't really pass a wish into it because I can just attack the Jirachi on the switch because it's quite a passive one, and Slowbro's just here like, yeah okay, and he's going to go out into his uh, Salazzle here, now I think he doesn't know that I'm Assault Vested, and as you can see he's going to go for a Sludge Wave, but I did the calcs, I live one, I live a Sludge Wave from a choice specs Salazzle at this range, so a Life Orb one, I can live no matter what, like, the Toxic will probably take me down afterwards, but it'll be worth it just to take out this Slazzle in the first place. So I stay in and click Psyshock as he goes for a Sludge Wave, and Slazzle's like, yeah, have some have some Sludge, but I'm just like, yeah, that's cool, have some fucking brain power, just, just get wrecked. And that thing goes down, Slowbro picking up two kills in this game, putting in an, act an actual absolute shift. Slowbro did so much work in this game, like... Switching into things left, right, and center. But th the reason I kind of let it down there was like, well, it can take out the Salazzle, which it was meant to deal with anyway. And Mamoswine's already gone down. There's not really much else for me to have to do there. So he brings in the Purugly. <sighs> My one regret here 
the biggest regret I have from this game is this play here. I'm up to four to three. I'm th I'm thinking, oh, I just outspeed this thing. I can just U-turn on it. I can absolutely U-turn on it. I've already ascertained that he had a Scarfer. I already ascertained that he had the uh, Scarf Mammoth Swine because that Gyro Ball wouldn't have killed otherwise. Uh, why did I make this play? I guess I was under the impression that Perugly couldn't be Scarfed. It had to be Z-Crystal. I mean, why wouldn't it be Z-Crystal? It's a Perugly. It's got the opportunity to do it. Why wouldn't it? So I go for a U-turn and he clicks Frustration and I'm like, shit. I might have just lost this game. I genuinely thought I might have lost this here because he still had the Jirachi around and I was suddenly down with like, shit, what do I do to this thing? I knew it was Scarfed, so I knew that... <sighs> I'm going to have to pause it here because this is quite an intricate play. So I knew that his best way of winning here was to get in Rotom and keep offensive momentum. So I knew that Perugly couldn't do anything to me. We had Fortress against Perugly. Perugly is locked into Frustration with Choice Scarf. It's going to be doing nothing. He has an easy switch any day, all day, into that uh, Rotom Wash. I have to make an offensive play here. I have to go and make a hard double into Coco. Such an important play. If I get this wrong, it's game. If he stays in frustrations me again, it's over. However, he does go into the Rotom, like I say, and he does. Like, I do go into Coco, and now I have the offensive pressure again. I can just go for a Dazzling Gleam or a, a Volt Switch, and I can do whatever I want. And thankfully, he decides, okay, Rotom's done enough. It can go down. And I'm like, yes! Finally, it's just Jirachi and Perugly versus the world. So it's... <sighs> it's Fortress season. Fortress doesn't really care much about what he has to do. But I didn't know what this Perugly had to hit me with. I knew it was Scarfed. It had Super Fang. And yeah, it was Scarfed. Gyro Ball's gonna hurt chunk that's a lot of damage uh, but I still kind of thought that he might have hidden path fire in the back to try and steal a kill so at this point I go for an earthquake because I know oh earthquake will kill it and he, he reveals shockerberry on Jirachi because I guess uh, that was a really good play for Diggersby because that could have had earthquake quite a lot of my offense can run um, uh, edge quake coverage which is quite nice so uh, yeah, he, he gets in this Jirachi and I'm like, well, you're just going to try an Iron Head up. Like, you're just going to try and flinch Storm me, aren't you? And I'm like, well, I don't want to be at a point where this Per Ugly can come in and kill me with like a hit, like whatever it has to hit me with, whatever coverage. So I'm like, you know what? If you're going to play this game, I know you can't hurt me with this Jirachi. So I'm going to go into Ditto and I'm going to wish and I'm going to give Fortress some health back because if I don't, then you've still got a possibility of winning the game. If you take out Fortress, it's over. I have Scarf Coco, I have Ditto, uh, not Scarf Coco, I have Wise Glasses Coco, I have Ditto, and I have um, Fortress left. So if Fortress goes down, then Scarf Poe Ugly wins from there. Unless I'm this Jirachi. <laughs> but yeah, I go for a wish, and I'm just going to pass this out into Fortress. And once Fortress gets the health back, I'm like, okay, that's game. Like, because he has no way of taking out my, uh, my mons from this range. He can try and stall me out if he likes, and he, he can wish stall all he likes, but it's not going to change the fact that he has nothing to kill this, this fortress with. And eventually, I'm just going to Earthquake it to death. So, he can protect here if he likes, and he can, you know, he can Iron Head and try and flinch me out, but I'm going to keep going for Earthquakes, and you can, you can do what you like, Jirachi. I'm going to keep going. Oh, dear me. Like I said, uh, at this point we were, you know, we were home and dry, essentially. The only thing that could stop us from winning this game right now is if we let him get a surprise kill and it goes to timer. Because at this point we only had about five minutes left on timer. It had been a very long game. Very. It was about three minutes left on timer and if he just keeps clicking Iron Head it can go to timer. And I really didn't want that. Both of my games, uh, like both of the, the games I've played against Wish Passers have been very, very long because of that. Because it's essentially offense versus defense and I'm having to use Ditto as a Scarf friggin' uh, a, a Scarf Wish Passer, which is like really annoying. <laughs> wish Passer, that's really hard to say. But yeah, he's going to keep clicking Lion Head, trying to get those flinches. I think he just resigned himself to that point. Uh, 
design the game, and I'm gonna land an earthquake, so Slowbro isn't gonna pick up the burn kill from beyond the grave, unfortunately. Fortress is gonna pick up its second kill of the game. Both my my walls uh, are picked up some decent kills in this game. I have such offense and Fortress is the one that's getting the kills. So um, he's going to go for frustration and I know at this point I can just gyro ball, jump into that Perugly, take it out and that is going to be the game. Bloody hell that was a long one. <laughs> but yeah that, that was the game. That was a very very like we both concluded at the end of the game that that was such a tactical match. It was ridiculous. It was so much pressure that one wrong move could change the flow of the game forever. Like, there were so many plays in that that just decided the game. Like, there was no hacks really that cost us the game. Like, there was a crit on both sides. There was a scold burn. Not really much hacks, to be honest. But the big play that changed momentum from him being in really good control of the game was me going for Gyro Ball on the Mammoth Swine. That Mammoth Swine doesn't go down. I can't spam Volt Switch and U-Turn anymore. And he he uh, he still has a, uh, a Scarfer in the back that can outspeed my Coco and my Beedrill and threaten them out. So that's really, really annoying. But at the end of the day, like there was another play later on with the uh, with the Rotom where I had to predict him going into the Rotom and then catch his switch with my own double switch so that I could keep momentum with Coco. That was a really important play as well because otherwise Rotom just gets the fire off a of Thunderbolt and something is going down. So there were so many plays in this game that just meant that whoever got the right prediction was going to win the game. And it was just really, really tactical. Uh, there were a couple of people listening to us play because we, we were in the PPL uh, battle room uh, on voice chat with each other on Defen so people could hear both of our reactions. And people were saying, that was tense. Ridiculously tense. But yeah, 2-1 and one with a plus 3 differential now. We're actually making progress. But this happens every season in TBU. I win the first... Uh, I lose my first game win my second and third and it ends up biting me in the ass I like because I'll, I'll go on a massive losing streak the objective now don't let that happen I can't let myself be complacent I said to myself at the start of the season I want to make playoffs I want to get to playoffs or anything for the first time ever we're gonna make that happen so I'm hoping we can make that happen <laughs> but yeah before we sign off, I just want to say thank you very much to uh, Peyton for the game, for, to Baby Eye for Sinister Sableye for playing me. That was an incredible match. Really, really tactical. Go and check him out. Such a nice guy, and his content isn't half bad either. So I'm pretty sure that you'll like his content if you like mine. It's more Pokemon stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and with that said, next week we're playing the Jersey Weaviles in Cloud Envy. A guy that I haven't actually played before, but I've heard he's very good, and I like his commentary style in his videos. So yeah, we're going to have to get our game faces on again. Next week will be a very, very important one for our season. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to leave a like and all that good stuff. It really does help my channel out. And I will see you in the next game. Sayonara, dudes. See you later.